Howdy, everyone. We've got a little something different on the painting table today. So for today's Jolly Lark, we've got a vehicle. I recently stopped by to visit some friends at the Monster Fight Club HQ, and they offered me a chance to paint up this prototype Cyberpunk AV4 transport vehicle. In the Cyberpunk tabletop miniatures game, um, Combat Zone, I'm usually playing Lawmen, and I've got a force of those already painted up. Um, so I thought the AV4 would be a perfect complement to them. Now, if you've watched my channel for a little while, well, first, thank you, but also you notice I don't paint a whole lot of vehicles or sci-fi stuff. I tend to live more in the fantasy side of things with occasional forays into sci-fi. But AV4 is such a cool, iconic vehicle, um, and I had an idea of a paint scheme that I think would be pretty fast to show everyone and would look cool on the tabletop. So I wanted to give it a whirl. Now, this is a big vehicle. Uh, my piece of palette paper here is an 11 by 14 piece of palette paper, and it's almost filling the whole thing. So I want to get this painted pretty quick. I was shooting to get this whole thing done in about an hour. I uh, ended up just a touch over that, about an hour and 15 minutes of video all told when I was done shooting. I'm going to cut out some boring bits, but it's about an hour start to finish. So to get it done reasonably quickly, which is usually my goal when painting miniatures, I'm going to start off by sponge painting on a base layer of navy blue over the black primer. Sponge painting is a great way to lay down a base coat on a vehicle because it creates kind of an interesting texture, um, especially when you're dealing with you know, large, smooth areas of a vehicle. It adds some visual interest that might not be there on the model to start with. And that's true of most vehicle models. The other thing it does is that when you're pressing the sponge into the surface of the model, it doesn't get into all the little cracks and crevices the way the tip of a brush might. So you you know, you can't do this on a model's face necessarily or on a, a miniature, but on a vehicle model, it's a really fast way to apply color to the raised areas of the vehicle without getting into the cracks and crevices. So as you can see, as I'm sponging on the navy blue, the black you know, it's still visible in most of the deeper kind of cracks in the recesses of the vehicle. And the navy blue is going on the raised areas of the vehicle relative to the sponge. So, you know, you're pressing the sponge into the surface of the vehicle like, you know, like a stamp. When you roll a stamp onto an ink pad, it's kind of the reverse of that. You're only getting the color on the raised portions, just like you get on the raised portions of a stamp. So with the sponge, I'm just you know going along. The sponge does soak up some paint, so you'd be aware that you're going to use up a, a bit of paint here. But I'm just going around all over the vehicle and sponging on the navy blue. Now, because I want this AV4 to match my lawman faction, which are painted in kind of a classic uh, police navy blue, um, this is going to be the main color of the vehicle. You can use this exact same technique for for any really any color, um, depending on what you wanted the final color of the vehicle to be, you might want to either start with a lighter base, you know, primer coat. Uh, in this case, the black is a really good match for navy blue. The black is a nice shadow color for the navy blue. But if, say, you wanted this vehicle to be a really bright, vibrant red, you know, to start with, you might want to start with a, a more dar a dark red maroon primer coat. Uh, if you want to do a white trauma team, you know, ambulance AB4, AB4, that, that would be fine. Uh, and I would just start with a light gray and then sponge on the white. Maybe even start with a medium gray, sponge on a light gray, and then use white as the final highlight. So just, again, kind of just moving all around the vehicle, getting all the surfaces and anything you can't easily reach with a big sponge block, um, it's probably fine to leave that black given the navy blue you know, is the main color of the vehicle. So the black shadows work just fine. Now, before you head to your kitchen sink and just grab a regular, you know, dish sponge, um, you really want to use something that's like this foam, this kind of more fine grained foam like you'd find in miniature figure cases. It just has a much tighter structure to it and is going to produce a better pattern of texture on the vehicle and smoother transitions on the areas where the sponge painting is fading into the, the black shadows. If I was doing this with a kitchen sponge, you'd get a lot more like clumps and lines and, and you wouldn't get the sort of regular look of the blue fading into the black that you get with the more fine grained sponge that I'm using here. Now, I'm gonna skip ahead to the next step in a second. Uh, but as you can see, if you've been watching from the beginning that I'm going back over the same areas a few times. 
Uh, I've got the ceiling fan running above me, and this is a big enough vehicle that I can you know, start on one side, do a first pass on the whole vehicle, and then go back in and sponge on some more paint onto any areas that I want to be more blue, um, any areas I want to smooth out the transitions, stuff like that. But I'm, I'm really being pretty, pretty quick and free with this and kind of letting the sponge do the work of painting the raised areas of the vehicle. Now, for this next step, we're going to start adding some more highlights to the vehicle. I'm going to grab a much brighter blue than I used for the base navy, and I'm going to add on a little bit and mix up a highlight color that's closer to navy than to that bright blue. Apply a little bit of that with the sponge, and you can, this is all still wet. You can kind of mix right on the palette here, mix with the sponge. And I'm really going for something that's very close to the navy, just, just a little bit lighter. Uh, this is not going to be an extreme highlight. This is going to be a little bit of a subtle highlight that we'll apply with the sponge. And then we'll go back in next and apply a, a brighter edge highlight to really define the shapes of the vehicle. And like the base coat, the this lighter blue is going on and is largely hitting the edges. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here so you can really see what's going on a little bit better and, and move the camera around. So that as we're sponging on this lighter blue la sponge paint layer, um, it's just kind of hitting the edges and the sponge naturally fades it out a little bit. If you end up with areas where you get a little bit more of the, the light blue than you want on an area, that, that's okay. You can always go back in with a little bit of the navy, just sponge on a little bit of the, the base coat navy to blend it in a little bit better. Um, but as you can see here, it's still catching the raised surfaces. And then naturally, because you're, you're the most pressure is applied to the, the raised edge, and it's naturally kind of feathering out the light blue at going back from that edge. Now, there's really no right or wrong amount of this highlight sponge layer to do. Um, kind of an instance of just kind of keep going at it until you're happy with how it looks, especially in a, you know, kind of a dark, gritty sci-fi future. Um, this technique is great for adding, again, adding a little bit of texture. I think the little, you know, it's just not perfectly even. Um, you're getting some little bits of the lighter blue along the flat panels of the surface. Um, I think that looks kind of cool. I think it looks a little bit like, you know, weathering and wind damage, scratches and scrapes that you'd get from flying a vehicle around a city. It gives, kind of breaks up some of the perfect smoothness of the vehicle surfaces. That's a look that I like. Uh, if you're going for a smoother, more clean sci-fi look, the sponge painting technique maybe isn't ideal and you'd rather apply the highlights you know, with an airbrush or something. But I really like how the irregularity of the sponge painting looks. I like the texture it creates and I, I think it helps to kind of sell it as a well-used vehicle. Um, and then in this next step, we're going to grab a nice big brush and add some clean edge highlights to the raised edges of the vehicle. And that'll help define the vehicle's shapes. Um, with sponge painting, you can sometimes end up with a little bit of like a camouflage look where the surfaces become a little blurry, which is okay, but adding a, a final edge highlight can help really define the different flat panels of the vehicle and pull the, the, pull the whole look of the vehicle back into a little bit of a cleaner look. So you end up with something that has a nice kind of sci-fi look but still has some of the weathered surfaces that you'd get from a vehicle that's been in use. Now, if you've ever tried edge highlighting a miniature's armor panels or something like that and had any trouble with it, practicing edge highlighting on vehicles is a great place to start because the model is so much bigger than the panels on a Space Marine or something. Um, you can use a big brush and you can see what I'm doing here. I'm, so I'm really using the edge of the bristles, not the tips of the bristles which is basically the same idea as if you were highlighting the edges of a miniature's armor, um, but is much easier to see and much easier to do on a vehicle. So even if you've uh, been intimidated or had a hard time edge highlighting the edges of a miniature, I really encourage you to give it a go with vehicles. It, it's an easy way to create the highlights on a vehicle. It's not that hard to do <laughs> on these big surfaces if you mess up and you aren't happy with it. Paint's still wet, just smudge it off with your finger. It'll blend the, the paint into the paint around it, you know, blend the highlight color into the paint around it, and don't even worry about it. Um, there's a reason that I end up every painting session with paint all over my fingers, is that it's really easy to just smudge out a mistake if you're not happy with it, and go back in and do it again. 
Now, you may have noticed already, what I'm doing is adding a little bit of that bright blue to all the edges of the vehicle that are visible from above, because they're still trying to add, you know, adding highlights to the vehicle such that, you know, where the surfaces that would be hit if there was a light shining on it from above. Um, that doesn't mean only the edges that are on top, but I'm not gonna put the bright blue highlights on the bottom edges of any of the panels. So, you know, on the nose of the vehicle here, it's getting highlights on the upper edges of the front, but not the lower edges, like you can see there. So just kind of going around the vehicle, adding that little bit of a light blue highlight to any upwards facing, or sometimes even sideward facing, forward facing edges. Um, until again, there's not a right or wrong amount of this. You could go kind of you know, extreme and just do the top edges. Um, you could do it all over if you wanted it to look more evenly lit, but keep on adding those edge highlights until you're happy with it, and then we'll move on to the next step. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to paint this up pretty quickly was so that I could get it on the table and, and give it a try on the table as a piece of scenery or add it to a, a scenario. Um, the other reason I wanted to, you know, paint it up reasonably quickly is that I know that this is a prototype model. Uh, guys at Monster Fight Club were kind enough to uh, send me home with this, but also this is just a prototype. This is a, a this is not the final model, and the final model I'm told is going to have even some more details and such. And I'm sure I'm going to want to paint one of those when they're available, when the final model is available. Um, so didn't want to spend so 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 long getting this one ready knowing that there's an even better version in the pipeline. So that final edge highlight, that pretty much finishes up the base color of the vehicle. So that's a, a sponge of navy blue, a sponge of a lightened navy blue, and then an edge highlight of bright blue. And I'm pretty happy with that finish for the vehicle. Another trick I use when trying to paint vehicles quickly is to use the details that are on the vehicle to guide where to put some complementary colors. So for example, with this, I wanted to add some red to the vehicle just for visual, to add some visual interest, to add some variety. And, you know, hand painting a clean red line across a flat surface, it's doable using some masking tape helps, but it's a lot easier if that line is already sculpted onto the vehicle. So picking some panels or picking some recessed areas of a vehicle model and choosing those to be your complementary accent colors instead of trying to hand paint stripes or lines or whatnot on the vehicle makes things a lot easier. Recessed panel lines are another great opportunity to add a very thin stripe of color that looks like it would be hard to paint, but isn't. So just taking a really thin brush, I'm just gonna lay in a little bit of the red into the panel line and then, as needed, use my finger to just smudge it off any raised areas that it hits. But your brush, brush will kind of naturally settle into the groove. And so that's a, a neat way to get like a little pinstripe of color on a vehicle. So that's the red blocked in. Uh, it's already looking pretty cool. And now, and I think the next step is to get some silver, some metal color on the metallic bits of this vehicle. So I'm using just some Vallejo, kind of basic, kind of medium silver color um, on my palette down there. Then I'm just going to grab a brush and a kind of a, just a medium kind of junky brush. I'm going to do I'm gonna go a heavy dry brush. I'm not wiping all of the paint off on a paper towel so that the brush is not, not quite as dry as you would normally expect dry brushing to be, um, but it's not so loaded up with paint that the paint is, has any chance of blobbing on or filling in the cracks from the crevices. I'm trying to give the raised areas of the vehicle a pretty solid coat of silver without getting much silver into the recesses of the metal areas. This little engine grill is a good example here where the silver is pretty solidly catching all of the raised lines, but still leaving the area in between each raised line pretty black. I want the silver to be reasonably bright. And we're gonna go back in after this and add a black wash, which will help to darken any areas that do catch a little bit of silver. Um, so don't worry about it too much if you do get some silver into one of the lower areas. Now, a big part of speed painting, 
uh, which doesn't get covered that much in painting techniques videos, but a big part of speed painting is just choosing easy, simple color schemes that look good on the table, but don't use too many different colors of paint. Using lots of different colors of paint can definitely get you a little, little bogged down. Um, so sticking a few colors, sticking with those, not getting too complicated. You know, with these silver, we just as easily could have started with a dark silver and dry brush with a medium and then dry brush again with a light. But a quick dry brush with a medium silver and then a black wash gets you about 90% of the way there um, and is, is much, much faster to do. So with the silver here, you know, speeding up the footage just because it's a, kind of a lot of the same thing. But just going in with this heavy dry brush of silver everywhere on the model that I want to be at all silver. Um, and then once that's all done and had a little bit of chance to dry, I hit it with a hair dryer real quick after I was done with this step just to speed up the drying. Because you never want to put a wash on top of paint that isn't fully dry. So once you've got your basic areas of silver blocked in, the other thing you can do once you've got a, uh, a little brush with a little bit of silver paint on it is start to add some weathering and wear to the vehicle. When doing this, I always like to think about if this vehicle existed and was flying around, driving around, rolling around, whatever, where are the spots of the vehicle that would come into contact with the world? Now, in this case of a flying transport vehicle, I assume it's largely going to be going forward and might be hitting some rocks and debris that are, that are through the air or some rocks and debris that it kicks up when it takes off. Um, you know, pigeons, whatever else might be in the air. So I'm gonna concentrate most of the wear on the front leading edges of the vehicle where things might come into contact with the vehicle as it was flying through the city. Um, to indicate, you can also, this is a chance, especially with a, you know, a flying vehicle like this that might sometimes be going kind of fast, you can sometimes use the weathering and wear to give a little bit of a hint of speed by doing what I'm doing right there and just kind of pulling some of the streakiness back towards the vehicle. It just gives a, a little bit of an impression that this is a vehicle that sometimes is going kind of fast. So to do that, all I'm doing is taking the brush with a little bit of silver paint, starting at one edge and then pulling the brush backwards towards the rear of the vehicle. And like with other steps, you can do this more, you can do this less, you can keep the vehicle pristine and not do this at all. You can have it all sorts of scratched and dented up, you know, halfway uh, to the scrap heap if you want it to look like a salvaged vehicle or something like that. Um, so how much of this weathering you want to add is really up to you. Um, also add a little bit of weathering to surfaces where it seems like, you know, a mechanic might clamor up on the top to load the gun, um, stuff like that. So any surfaces that it seems like might see some wear and tear in use of the vehicle, just add a little bit of silver to the edge. Um, I'm not going rusty on this vehicle. Uh, you know, this is a sci-fi vehicle. Presumably they're using some sort of metals that wouldn't necessarily rust that quickly. Um, so we'll just keep it simple with the weathering. Just some of the, so the silver chipping on the edges helps tell the tale that this is a well-used vehicle and adds a little bit of visual interest to the miniature. So in addition to weathering, you can also add a little battle damage. So I'm going to add a little series of bullet holes to one side as if the AV-4 took some fire uh, you know, during a street fight or something. So to do the bullet holes, I'm gonna take a, a little brush with the same silver that I'm using for everything else and just kind of make a little irregular blobs of silver on the side of the vehicle. When a bullet hits a surface like that, you're generally not gonna end up with a perfectly round hole. The material is gonna dent and deform. Uh, so do a little series of five bullet holes by starting with some kind of irregular blobs of silver while trying to keep the area of each blob about the same, like so. And then with another kind of a small skinny brush, grab some black and just put a little dot of black somewhere in that area of silver to represent the actual hole that the bullet made in the surface. So what you're doing with the black is making the hole and the silver that you put on first then kind of looks like the area of the surface that was deformed by the bullet going through. So this is a, a super quick, easy way to make bullet holes in a vehicle that look pretty good from a distance and are really fast and easy to do. I'd go kind of Spartan on this, you know, a few help tell the tale. 
Uh, if you make it absolutely riddled with bullet holes, you might end up with something that looks more like a leopard print. Uh, but a few are a, a fun detail. Uh, and then if you want, you can grab a little bit of the lighter blue and just put a tiny little bit of lighter blue on the bottom of the silver area to make it look kind of again, look like a, a highlight where the edge of the material is going inward. So we're kind of just painting a little micro optical illusion on the side of the vehicle. Now, while you've got a small brush with some bright blue in your hand, this is also a good opportunity to touch up any edge highlights, uh, any smaller areas that you didn't get to with your big brush the first time around. Um, this vehicle has a little bit more detailing around the edge of the door that I didn't quite hit with the big brush. And you just go in and add a little bit more, add some touch-ups, and you can even add some little weathering streaks with the bright blue that end up looking kind of like some light surface scratches that weren't so bad as to go all the way through the paint of the vehicle. All right, next up in the weathering front is to apply some of this mud wash. This is one of the Vallejo washes that comes in the larger bottle. It's really thin. It looks opaque on the palette, um, but it's almost like a pre-mixed, very, very thinned down wash. But I, I've, I've used it a couple times before. I think it's really good for adding some subtle weathering um, to stuff. And, and pay attention to what it looks like right now, and then look at what it looks like when it's dry. It go looks like it's going to be I don't know, more thicker, muddier when it's wet than it actually does when it dries. It dries much more translucent than it looks when it's wet. But one thing that's nice about that is it allows you to kind of slop it on because it dries pretty thin. Uh, you don't have to be too careful in the application. Uh, if there's some little bubbles in it, fine. If there's some puddles and pools, that's okay. Uh, and what I've found is that it is thin enough that when it dries, it really looks more like dusty dirt than it does like caked on mud. So for this to kind of simulate some of the dust and dirt that a, a flying vehicle might pick up in the takeoff and landing, you know, this is not a tank that's kicking up big splatters of mud all over the place. I just want to give the bottom, you know, quarter of the vehicle some dinginess to, again, make it look like it's been traveling the city streets. Um, the local police forces don't always take it in for a clean every day. Uh, so you can apply with a brush, you can kind of spread it out with a sponge, just kind of looking, you know, for an irregularity to the application that'll look natural once it all dries. I'm going to want to do more than one coat probably, so while that first coat of the weathering wash dries, I'm just going to add a very small, subtle, bright red highlight to the red stripes, just a little bit on top, a little bit on the edge, uh, just to give the red the slightest bit more pop. Uh, on this specific vehicle, I'm just going to kind of put a little patch of bright red on the upwards facing facet of that stripe there, a little bit on the edge, and then with both of them, just use the bristles of the brush to feather it out a little bit. One thing that's fun about painting vehicles is that you can kind of get away with a little bit more since the surfaces are bigger. You don't have to be quite so careful. Just going to use a little water to feather out the red highlight, and you're good to go. So a little bit of bright red on the edge. Like so, wet your brush, get the water off the brush so that it's not sopping wet, and then just kind of pull that red out along the rest of the stripe to get just kind of a quick blend. So next up, I'm gonna grab a little bit of white and paint the interior of the windows with a quick base coat of white instead of silver, and that's to, to prep those for a coat of a bright green later. So this is just a quick fill in the windows with white now in preparation for putting like kind of a fluorescent green on them later, which will match the visors of my lawman gang. Weathering a vehicle is always a little bit of back and forth. So with the, uh, the first coat of the mud wash dry, I'm gonna go back in with a sponge, a clean sponge, and soak up some of that mud wash and just kind of sponge it on the edges, putting a little bit more on top of what's already there. Uh, and you can do this like many of the other steps in this process, kind of do it as many times as you want uh, until you like the look of it. The sponge can add some little different textural elements to the mud, make it look a little bit different than the stuff you brushed on earlier. Um, you could put this on, put on 10 layers of it. You could put on two, put on zero, uh, whatever suits your fancy. So after that, up next is that black wash I mentioned earlier. 
Uh, with this, I'm going to use the Citadel Nuln oil, and I'm just putting this on in a reasonably generous layer all over the metallic areas. This will flow into the cracks and crevices, darken up any silver that got in there, and just add a, bring back a little definition to the metal areas that you might have lost in the dry brushing step. Uh, this is just kind of an all over wash. I'm not particularly targeting it or anything. Um, just and getting it on there in a decent amount. You want it to kind of pool up in the deeper recessed areas of the miniature. So pretty straightforward. Do let this dry all the way after because you're putting on enough paint that it's going to take a, take a few minutes to dry. It doesn't dry quite so instantly as the sponged on layers, uh, edge highlighting, and stuff like that, you know, the thinner coats of paint do. And finally, for the windows, I'm going to grab the Citadel Technical Hex Wraith Flame. Uh, this is a really terrific fluorescent green wash that will give you kind of a glow effect to things that are painted on. And it works really well for these recessed windows because it'll gather in the corners and be thinner in the middle of the window, which really does sell the look like each window is glowing. You can accentuate that effect by just pulling, using your brush, kind of wipe the paint off your brush and use the bristles of your brush to pull the paint out of the center of the window a little bit and make sure it's gathering in the edges like so. Thanks again to my friends at Monster Fight Club for the miniature. Thanks for subscribing, liking the video, ask any questions below, and we'll see you next time for another Jolly Lark.